In this video, we are tackling the very complicated subject of payroll. So let's talk about payroll in general. If you have employees, you're going to need to do payroll, and you have some decisions to make about how your payroll is going to be done. If you're a large enough company and you have people who can do payroll for you, you may want to do payroll in-house. But if you don't have someone who can take care of payroll and do it with solid knowledge and skills, you may want to outsource that function. And this is one of the great values that's available to small businesses is being able to outsource payroll to a company that focuses 100% on doing payroll. There are a lot of great payroll companies to choose from if you want to go that route. Now, some outside payroll services are integrated with QuickBooks, so that information is going to flow in easily. If you're using a QuickBooks payroll solution to do your payroll in-house, it's already going to be in QuickBooks. But if you're using an outside payroll company and it is not integrated with QuickBooks, then you're going to need to enter that information doing what we call an after-the-fact payroll. So let's look first at doing payroll in QuickBooks. So if we come over here to our left nav bar and we click on payroll and we go to employees, QuickBooks is going to tell us that we don't have anybody set up yet. And we can say get started and QuickBooks is going to give us the options that are available if we want to set up payroll using their payroll services. Now these different subscriptions are set up for different needs of a business and Intuit does a good job of thinking through what different types of businesses may need. And these are options that may change over time. So I'm not here to promote QuickBooks subscription services. They're really good and they do a great job, but you know there are other options that you should explore as well. If we come over to the left nav bar and go to apps and say find apps, if we put in payroll, it's going to bring up all the different apps that are available that are QuickBooks Intuit approved apps. And again, these will change over time as new apps come along and maybe old apps change. But this is another option for you to check out that will help you do payroll and link it to QuickBooks. But you can also look at some of the big payroll providers that have been around for a long time, like ADP, Paychex, other companies like that. Now let's talk briefly about what happens when you have a payroll company where you're doing things outside of QuickBooks. You're bringing that information in after the fact, after the payroll has been done. So in that case, we want to do a journal entry. And to do a journal entry, we're going to go to our plus new button and we're going to go to journal entry. So let me bring up a little example that I put together here. So every journal entry for payroll is going to have a bunch of different accounts, depending on what you've got going on. If you're going to have expense accounts where you're keeping track of your wages and salaries, you're going to have payable accounts where you're keeping track of federal and state income taxes that you're withholding from employees' paychecks. You're going to have Social Security taxes and Medicare taxes that you're withholding from your employees' paychecks, and also the other side of those taxes that the company is responsible for paying. You're going to have federal unemployment tax, state unemployment tax. There's going to be a lot going on with these journal entries. And then, of course, we're going to have cash because, you know, the employees don't take buttons for payment. Well, sometimes Terrence takes candy for payments, but that's another story. That's an under the table kind of thing. We don't we don't talk about that. Mm -mm. So if you have a situation where you've got a payroll company doing your payroll and the payroll company is taking the money out of your bank account, what they're taking out is the net amount. They're not taking out the full amount that you're paying the employee. They're only taking out the part that is the employee's net pay and the amount of taxes. So let's look at an example here. So let's say that Terrence Inc. has payroll of $2,500 a week, and we're splitting that up between cost of labor, which is a cost of goods sold account. So these are the people that are actually going out and de-stinking the dinosaurs as their job. This is part of us delivering our service. Then we also have people who are working in the office, for example. So we've got a salaries and wages expense account. It's not a cost of goods sold account. So this is more of a general and administrative expense. So we don't want to put that in cost of goods sold. This is a support staff role or management role. So that accounts for the $2,500 in actual wages and salaries expenses. And let's say we withhold some ridiculous amount from our employees, $45 for payroll taxes 
which we all know is which we all know is crazy low, but let's just go with it. And then the amount that's going to be withdrawn from our bank account is $24.55. So if we're using an outside payroll service and we're doing an after the fact payroll, if we just let this come through our bank feed, it's going to show that we've got $24.55 in payroll expenses. But that's not really accurate. That's only part of the picture. So what happens with small businesses is at the end of the year, their payroll numbers are not correct because we haven't captured all of the expense. We've only captured the amount of cash that was taken from the account. So let's look at this example. So we said our total expense is $2,500, but the total credited from the bank is $2,455. So if that feeds through and we just say that is what our payroll expenses, we have understated our expenses. So we can account for that doing a journal entry like the one that's here. So I'm going to go ahead and enter this journal entry and I'll be right back. Okay, there we go. There is our journal entry. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to say make recurring. You'll see up here it says recurring journal entry. And what are we going to call this? We're going to call this payroll. And the type can be either scheduled or it can be a reminder or it can be unscheduled. I'm going to set it up as a reminder because I don't want it to just enter automatically and me not realize that it's done that. So I'm going to remind myself one day before the transaction date. And this is going to be weekly. And and it's going to be every Monday. And we're going to start this on the next Monday. And will it ever end? We can set a date if it's only a certain number of times that you want this to happen. We're going to say none because our payroll is going to be ongoing. And then we're going to say save template. And then if you want to see a list of your recurring transactions, you can come to the gear icon to list and recurring transactions. And here is our payroll journal entry. So if we ever want to change this entry, we can come here and hit edit and it will allow us to add accounts or change accounts. Or if you've got a new amount that's typical, we can change that here and then say save template and it will update. And then it becomes this huge time saver. So all we have to do is get, now all we have to do is get the report from our payroll company and we can go in and update our journal entry and save it. So regardless of whether you're using QuickBooks subscription for payroll or you're using an app that works with QuickBooks or you're using a payroll company that links up with QuickBooks or you're doing an after the fact payroll, the goal of all of those is to get the correct information into QuickBooks so that your financial statements are correct. In our next video, we're going to talk about 1099s, which are sort of related to payroll, but it's really about our subcontractors and making sure that we are keeping our businesses in compliance with the IRS. See you in the next video.